the festive season. It can be a wonderful time with joy, merriment, happiness, and love, or it can be fraught with dilemmas and potential ass. I'm here to solve your Christmassy dilemmas. I'm like Santa Claus, Lester Claus. So I'm not doing Reddit this time. I've decided to go into a much more moral place, Tumblr, and help you guys decide if you're the festive hole, or you're gonna get coal, or if you're sliding into my good list. Get yourself a snack, as it is time to dunk ourselves into some sweet Christmas tea. Hot chocolate. Cocoa? Spiced cocoa. Oh my god, there must be over a thousand submissions here. You guys have got some holiday issues. I feel like before I delve into this, I need to meditate a bit. Awareness is beyond time, space, and duality itself. Am I, M22, the whole for telling my- <laughs> I regret this whole thing, I'm sorry. Am I the whole for telling my boyfriend's parents that we're together on Christmas? Ooh, bad timing, dude. I'm already feeling whole here. He wanted to keep up the roommate's act, but I just couldn't handle it, and I feel like he's ashamed of me. There is a lot going on here, but you can't just out the relationship before the boyfriend's ready. He might not fully be out yet, or there could be some complex family dynamics why they don't want to bring it up yet. I feel like you doing that puts so much pressure onto the boyfriend and the parents and you, all in this enclosed space. Space while you're all in this house for what's meant to be a happy time. I mean, they could have been accepting a happy, but there might have been a multitude of reasons why the boyfriend wasn't ready to say it. I would say bad timing, dude. I see where you're coming from. I don't think they'd be ashamed of you, but I feel like you could have had that conversation with your boyfriend in private rather than announcing it over the turkey. Can you pass the gravy, Sally? By the way, I'm having sex with your son. No, bad, bad, bad choice. Am I the whole for not getting my boyfriend's family anything for Christmas because I couldn't afford it, even though they always get me something? That's tough. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Is there anything you could do? I don't think Christmas should be about you spent seven dollars on me, so I deserve it back. It should just be more about the general merriment. Could you club in with your boyfriend and get a joint present? Maybe like a nice handwritten card saying you'll cook them all a meal sometime? Or put a nice picture in a frame or something? I don't really think they'll care, so no, save your money. Get on my good list. Am I in the hall for making my girlfriend think I died in a fire? <laughs> what? For context, I live in Australia. Oh yeah, you've got hot Christmas, don't you? That must be so strange. I mean, the UK weather isn't great, obviously, but I do like that we get a bit of snow sometimes. I live in Victoria, Australia. The rest of my family lives up in Queensland. So most of the years for Christmas, we do a family road trip up to visit the rallies. We've done it since I was little, and it's sort of a family tradition. Oh, this is terrible, I can't do <laughs> I was trying, I'm sorry. A few years ago, there were some serious bushfires here. We checked beforehand and didn't think they'd affect our route too much. So we went ahead with the road trip. As we were driving up, I was messaging my girlfriend about the trip and other random things and sending her photos of the view from the window whenever we saw something cool. In most of the photos, the sky was pretty red because of the fires. We hadn't actually seen any fires until we went through this massive cloud of black smoke and saw some flames off in the distance. Not gonna lie, it was a bit scary. So I sent some photos to my girlfriend and making a joke about the flames coming closer. What? Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Because we all know humor is the best coping strategy. True, I do like a good joke in times of peril. Unfortunately, we're in the middle of Australia and the internet reliability here is wrong rocky at best of times. So as soon as we sent the pictures through, I lost connection and none of my follow-up texts went through. Cue my girlfriend panicking back in Victoria that I died in heat death on the way to Queensland. She would never see me again. Oh. This is terrible. Your girlfriend must have been so stressed. Eventually, okay, I regained my bars and her messages came through, but we were well out of the smoke by now and I was in a cheeky mood and in the middle of watching Fellowship of the Rings on the laptop. So I left her messages marked on red until we got to the motel. What? You left her thinking you were dead for a joke? Okay, I'm sorry. I haven't read the rest, but I'm going with hole. Skippy the bush kangaroo is not gonna rescue you out of that hole. Safe to say I was in trouble, everything's fine now and it's being laughed off as a joke, but she still brings it up sometimes when she wants to win an argument, which makes me think it affected her a bit more than I intended it to. Yes, that was a holy thing to do, but I feel like you could sit down maybe and be like, hey, I've been really thinking about this. I'm so sorry for making you think I was dead in a fire. It was silly. Maybe then you'll just feel that hole get released a bit. You know? Wow. That was wild. But hey, good timing. If you are feeling stressed over the holiday season, I've got the perfect thing for you from the sponsor of today's video, Headspace. I love this sponsor because it's something I genuinely use. I said a few months ago that I've been having a bit of a busy brain and lying awake at night with a million thoughts going through my head. And since then, I've been trying out meditation and mindfulness during Headspace. My sleep has actually got so much better. And I think a lot of that is actually attributed to de-stressing my mind, being more mindful, not staring at my phone for the very moment before I fall asleep, and also trying out these exercises. The new habit that I've been trying to drop is checking my phone and emails as soon as I wake up in bed. I'll be like, morning, hello Gmail, and that is not a healthy attitude. So you can start your day with something called the wake up, and this one's got video as well. It's sleep tips from the animal world. Look at that pleasing bear. That's just a calming, relaxing, mindful video about how animals hibernate. And that's the first thing I see in the morning. I'm like, ah, what a lovely start to the day. Also, if you do find the whole 
holidays super stressful, they've got this happier holidays tab where you can manage holiday social anxiety, which used to be a real problem for me. I've got a lot better with that. A festive tree of rest meditation to help you get to sleep. Ooh, a video about giving plants as gifts. I have been propagating my plants, so that's actually perfect for me. Plants are just the infinite gift giver if you know how to clone them. So if you want to give your mind a little treat this holiday season, you can click the linky below to download Headspace or you can scan this QR code. You get 60 days for free and that is a perfect amount of time to have an extra tool in your belt to get you all the way through Christmas past January. Just treat yourself to a bit of mindfulness. Thanks Headspace. Now to stress myself out again with more of your dilemmas. Am I the whole of always checking my mum's Amazon account to see what she bought me for Christmas? <laughs> She's a terrible gift giver and sometimes if it's really bad, I'll cancel the order on Amazon. What? You're just logging into the Amazon and canceling it? <laughs> That's terrible. She'll then ask me why it was canceled because she doesn't understand technology. And I'll tell her it must be out of stock so she doesn't need to buy me another one. This has happened three times. No, that's bad. I feel like gifts are 75% about the person giving them feeling a joy of giving and not about you wanting the weird socks or whatever your mum's got you. So no, stop it. Just accept the gift. I think what you could do is say, hey mum, here's a little Christmas list of things I'd like so you don't get a taxidermy dog or whatever you're finding under the tree. But in this case, I'm gonna say it. You are the hole and you get in some coal. Am I the hole for leaving my family's festive activities to watch the new Dan and Phil gaming this video? No, gaming is <laughs> more important than your family. I'm kidding. Am I? My family often got frustrated with me leaving family time from 2014 to 18 to watch the new video. They got a break while you're on hiatus, but now you're back. I feel like I'm gonna ruin Christmas. You can leave family Christmas for 15 minutes to watch a Dan and Phil video. And if that's a problem, just say you're going to the toilet and watch it on your phone. You're not the whole. If you haven't checked out gaming this, there is a dearth of Dan and Phil videos waiting for you. Like a festive treasure trove of treats and only a small amount of tricks. Am I the whole for not decorating for Christmas? I'm not a Christmas person. I'm a Halloween person. And ever since I moved out in my early 20s, I haven't decorated for Christmas. My family hate this and try and pressure me into buying stuff. Now my neighbors in the building sent around a leaflet about decorating. Would I be the whole to not decorate? I just can't be bothered. You are not the whole. It's your house, do what you want. If you want to have Halloween all year round, go for it. Or could you compromise and have Nightmare Before Christmas theme? That could also work. You're fine. Am I the whole for sending my dad a Christmas card from a random name and watching as he spent the whole of December ranting about how he couldn't remember the person? <laughs> I saw a lot of this on TikTok last year. He was frantically looking for the non-existent person's details to send a card back to. I think no, that was really funny. As long as you told him in the end and he's not currently suffering like, who is Ruth and Jim? I feel like that kind of prank can last a day and no more. Otherwise it becomes cruel. So one day you're fine, three days, I think you're teetering into the hole. Am I the hole for ruining Christmas for my boyfriend and best friend? For starters, me, F20, and this girl, F20, are not friends anymore. We used to be besties in middle school, but we started hanging out in different crowds and we lost touch. We always celebrate the holidays together and exchange gifts. While this year, we'd been closer than past years because we graduated college, we still haven't seen each other as often. Imagine my surprise when I find out my boyfriend works with her. Okay, they work at a Christmas shop that's only seasonally open. This sounds like some kind of romantic comedy. I wanted to surprise my boyfriend by going to pick him up from work since I never do. But before I could even park, I saw them through the window packing up and closing. They seem very flirty with each other. Oh no, don't do it. Laughing and throwing Christmas plushies and stuff at each other. I tried not to think anything weird about it, but she had never mentioned to me that she worked with my boyfriend. That is a red flag. Do you think there's some after hours shenanigan going on? I drop it until last week when I noticed my boyfriend arriving later and later home from work. Oh no, they're doing it in the Christmas tree. Sometimes he stays late, but now it's just a few hours at least. I decided against my better judgment that I'm gonna go watch him after work. I feel at this point that's justified. You're just gonna go see what's going on. I knew what time he got out and I just wanted to see if he was actually staying late. I sat in my car across the street, watched them working together again and closing up. And I watched my middle school best friend kiss my boyfriend. No, in the Christmas shop and then watch them grope each other before disappearing away from the window view. They were effing in the tree. I am devastated. And to make matters worse, my best friend keeps asking me when we're doing the gift exchange. F that. You slept with my boyfriend. How am I meant to go about this? Am I the asshole if I bring it up and ruin everyone's Christmas or should I wait until after the holiday season because things will get messy, but also I can't stomach being around either of them. I don't know what to do. You have to <laughs> enthusiastically hit myself in the balls with my phone. <laughs> I'm so excited by the story. This is actually crazy. I feel like the only way to deal with this is to blow up Christmas in the most spectacular way possible. Now I've gone into movie brain here. The reasonable person would go have an adult conversation with both of them. But I kind of want you to go to the Christmas gift exchange and then give them both gifts and then they open it and it's just a piece of paper that says, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's up to you. I would really enjoy that if I watched the movie. This is your life. You're not the whole if you ruin their Christmas. They ruined your Christmas. They don't deserve a gift. They can get in the bin. That was drama. Oh my gosh. My dad died last year. Okay, that's a drastic change from the last one. It's chill. 
But I'm sorry. I've just never heard anyone say that someone died and they're saying it's chill. I am sorry to hear that. But I found out he was having an affair with my best friend's mum. She's a super important person in my life and I feel really betrayed by her. But now it's Hanukkah time and I keep ignoring her when she tries to reach out. My family says I should move on and answer the phone, but I'm still mad. That is a complex, effed up, series of things you've got to deal with. If this person is really important to you, I feel like you need to kind of process what's happened. If it is an important relationship to you, you should really think about if you want it to continue. And if you do, give it a chance to just have a conversation and see where you end up. Hello, Philip. I am an avid Playmobil enthusiast. I don't I don't know where this is going. And have used their advent calendars since infancy. Okay. My favorite is 4155 Christmas in the forest. I have to Google this. Is this real? Oh, oh it's real. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> I, I'm invested. My favorite of the animals is the boar child. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Or the ballad, which makes an appearance in many Playmobil packs. I suspect my friend that was stealing my boar and replacing it with his own as the boar in my pack now has rough sides when mine was smooth from rubbing it as a child. You don't want a rough boar in the mix. Would I be the whole if I planned a heist to swap them back? Merry Christmas from Boar Boy. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't think we'd get this gold from Reddit. We've got a certain energy from these Tumblr asks that are truly unmatched. Hi, boar boy. I don't think you're the whole for wanting to do a boar heist. Your friend shouldn't have taken your pristine boar, and I support your actions in getting it back. Am I the whole for throwing a wine bottle holder my grandma gave me for Christmas in the trash? Devastated that I can't find a picture of it, but it was a giant pink bedazzled high-heeled shoe. Oh no. Truly the most atrocious object I've ever seen, but it was a gift from my grandma, and I threw it in the trash. Here's the thing. You're a mild hole for this. What you could have done is the Dan Howell special. Put it in a drawer. When grandma comes over, open a little bottle with it. Go, look at this shoe. I love it so much. Then put it back in the drawer when she's gone. The trash was harsh. I, 30 male, work for a niche business delivering Christmas trees while wearing a kilt. <laughs> no, you are sneaking me. It's not as kinky as it sounds. Usually it's just middle-aged women trying to spice up their life. The problem is it's effing cold and I don't like kilts. Lately, I haven't been wearing it. No one said anything except recently I delivered to these guys and I saw the disappointment in their eyes when I showed up. I think one of them started crying and posting about the disappointment on social media. I feel bad, but also why do I have to freeze my balls off for random people each year? So am I the whole for not wearing a kilt? If you don't know the context, I don't have a car and it's annoying to get a tree in London. So I found a service that will deliver a tree to your house and their biggest selling point was it's delivered by a man in a kilt. I, I'm not I'm not looking for kilted men to deliver me things. I just thought it'd be a nice bonus to every time the man has not arrived in a kilt and I've been a little bit disappointed. Having read his perspective, no, I don't think you should be wearing a kilt in the icy temperatures, but maybe get your boss to remove it from the website. Maybe just put a Santa hat on or something. Maybe next year I'll just answer the door in a kilt and even everything out. Am I the whole for having a Grinch fetish? <laughs> I can't. I have a Grinch fetish. My boyfriend knows about this and for the most part accepts it. Great. Celebrate your truth. He isn't crazy about it and doesn't really get it, but he at least tries and that's all I ask. He'll sometimes read the book to me to set the mood. This is so, I can't. I can't do this. Or if he's getting really kinky, he'll tell me, you're a mean one in the heat of the moment. He's even begrudgingly come around to at least playing one of the three versions of the film every time we every time we do the deed. <laughs> well, we have to stay away from the live action one because it's too much for me. Okay. The thing is, I don't want to hear about the Grinch or listen to the Grinch or watch the Grinch. I want- Oh my- I can't read this. I want to be effed by the Grinch. <laughs> and for the record, this is common amongst women. Is it? Is it? Is it? Susan, the Grinch's bulging sack of toys to me and others is what a Max truck is to Cardi B. The fact that he's good with dogs, it just makes me want that long fuzzy- Nope! My boyfriend asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I told him straight up I want him to put on the greenest, silkiest Grinch costume he could find, take me from my bed on Christmas Eve, and ravage me in front of the Christmas tree. <laughs> he refused and said it was too weird for him. I was literally begging that man to- Oh my god, no, can't read that. If I don't drop the Grinch thing, which as I said is incredibly common amongst women, but sadly taboo, he's gone for good. Am I the whole? Is there a compromise? Or do I need a more adventurous man? Uh, <laughs> I think it might be hard to find someone that's into the Grinch as much as you. Is there a forum? If your boyfriend's not into it, you're gonna have to drop it. Watch those Grinch videos on your own. Then you gotta think, is the Grinch a deal breaker for me? And if it is, go forth and find your handsome green stud. No, I'm not, I'm not. We're done. You've ruined it. It's over. I do not want to be involved in this situation. Wow, thank you. I Hopefully that made you all feel better about whatever's in store for you this Christmas because that was quite a chaotic group of problems. I need to go meditate again after that. I'm just gently bringing the attention. 
back to the breath. Because I'm feeling kind, if you like this video right now, you'll be placed on my good list. No matter what you've been up to, you can check out Dan and Phil Games. We've been having so much fun over there and it'd be great if you could join us. Thank you again to the Legends Headspace for sponsoring this video. If you want to try out my 60 day free trial, you can click the link below, scan this QR code and start your meditation adventure. Subscribe, have a wonderful life and I will see you very soon. I'm never watching The Grinch again. Goodbye.